It's a dry and dusty place. The makeshift shelters offer little protection. Yet 245 families with ties to the south have been living here for a year, some for two, waiting for a ride home to South Sudan. The conditions are appalling. Water has to be brought in and paid for. Disease is unavoidable, and there are no schools for the children. The High Commissioner for Refugees, Antonio Guterres, came to hear from some of those most affected. This community is to be moved by train, but at the train station belongings have been piled up for months and people are waiting there too. The train is unreliable. It takes only 600 to 900 people at a time. Security issues and derelict tracks mean it departs only every two or three months. At that rate, it could take years to get everybody home. The High Commissioner said a solution had to be found. The first thing we are, will be trying is to have an agreement between the government of Sudan and the government of South Sudan to have a plan for moving the people with the, the vulnerables, the most vulnerables eventually going by plane and with road being the main other uh, mechanism, but that will of course require a careful organization, security corridors and an adequate reception and integration in the southern side. Since the South voted for independence last July, things have changed for the Southerners living in Sudan. Those who worked in the public sector lost their jobs, some in private business as well. As of yet, there is no agreement on how to document South Sudanese in Sudan or for them to legalize their stay if they don't want to go back. UNHCR is offering to support both government to move these people so that they can finally start their new lives in South Sudan.